Hello everybody, it's Kevin, this is a hat. Uh, we're going to talk today about how to take care of your hats. Very simple, basic, but useful knowledge. Um, I've worked at a huge hat shop, busy hat shop for many years, and um, I've found that my hats have lasted very well. A lot of my hats are super old. Um, working at JJ's, JJ Hat Center full time, we get something called a season hat. So uh, one of the perks working there is that you get a free hat in the fall and you get a free hat in the summer, two per year, um, only for full time workers. So being there for 25 years there, uh, 26th year, I'm working from home, I've acquired a lot of hats. That's, um, you know, like 50 hats right there, not counting the ones, you know, that I've been given from uh, sales reps or the hats that I bought myself personally or, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot more. And uh, you just tend to acquire a lot of hats. Things come in that you really like and you just have to get it, you know. So I've got a lot of hats. The thing is, most of my favorite hats tend to be older ones. Um, I'm a big, big Borsellino wearer. This is, uh, this is a Borsellino. I have two of these, and I also have uh, one of these in uh, blue, too, like a royal blue, which uh, is at the shop right now. This one I've perforated. You can see there are holes there. This is an old, old machine. It's an antique machine that perforates the crown for a little airflow. Um, I'm just one of those guys that tends to be a little hotter than everybody. You know, like I'm always like 10 degrees hotter than everyone else in the shop. And my history working there is a little weird. When I first started the first 20 antique machine that perforates the crown for a little airflow. Um, I'm just one of those guys that tends to be a little hotter than everybody. You know, like I'm always like 10 degrees hotter than everyone else in the shop. And my history working there is a little weird. When I first started the first 20, 22 years, I was a big time workaholic and um, I drank way too much coffee. So you could see some of the old videos, I'm like really jittery and stuff. And, I've mellowed. I've I've learned to mellow throughout the years, uh, which is good. It's it's good for my health and stuff, and just you know my general uh, well-being. But um, I used to be very hyper, and um, I would sweat a lot wearing these hats. So one of the things I always did was remove my linings. You'll notice that almost every one of my hats is missing the silk lining. I pull them out. Um, the purpose of the lining basically is that um, the only parts that really make contact with your skin um, that might possibly get sweaty are right here where the band is. Okay? So you're touching here. The head is touching there. Maybe in the back to, you know, here. It's not touching above. It's not touching here. Only there. Okay? The other spot that touches is the crown. Right in the middle of the crown here, some people, especially if you don't have full and bushy hair, it can touch your um, the skin of your head and you can get a sweat stain right there. So the idea is they put these preventatives in so that your hat technically could last you almost forever, just in, indefinitely. You know, your kids, kids can have them if you take care of them. Okay, um, the leather sweatbands can be changed if you wear, you know, you totally wear it out or if it rots or something. You can change it. Um, the silk linings, they come right out, the satin linings, they pull out and they're changeable. And we sell them to, I think they're 10 bucks now. Years ago they were five, they went up. Uh, and we have stacks of linings. So you could just keep changing the linings. Um, you could change the bands if you sweat through there too. Um, what I generally do is I put these pads in there, that's called a cap bend new, 
C A P B A N N U. Capanu pad. Uh, I think I have one here on the side somewhere. Yeah, they look like this. We sell these things. Uh, they're five dollars. They're made out of cotton. It's like a little embroidered pillow. Not not embroidered. It's like a little cotton stuffed pillow with adhesive on the back. It comes with like a yellow strip that you peel off, and it's a sticker. It sticks right here to the forehead part of the sweatband and comes between the hat and your skin. So basically the sweat never touches the band. So for me, I've never had an issue with having to change sweatbands because uh, as soon as I start to see that the tiniest bit of, see that? That's sweat going through. When I see the tiniest start of it, I'll slap a sweatband in there. Um, their pros, their cons. Obviously the big pro is that it's going to make your hat just last and last. You're not going to sweat. Generally the things that people throw their hats away for are sweat stains here and on the brim. Okay, It starts in the bands here and then eventually the band can't hold anymore and it just goes beyond it and you get sweat stains everywhere there you know, on the brim and there. Um, and the other thing is from grabbing it here, people wear holes right there and the hole gets bigger and bigger. So if you avoid these things, you'll never ever have to throw your hat away. Um, I like to put these things in there as soon as I get the first warning of any sweat stains happening, you know, the first thing. Their pros and their cons. The cons are going to be, okay, they stay wet. So with a leather sweatband, you could just dry it with your, you know, bandana. You grab your bandana and you just dry it. And then it's nice and dry and sanitary and it feels good. But with a cap and new, it stays wet. So it doesn't it doesn't feel great. You know, if you're working all day and you're hustling and you're getting hot and stuff, that stays wet, you know? So it's, it's the kind of thing that you're gonna have to um, change it every once in a while. You know, you can get maybe two or three for a summer season or something. Um, I usually have a couple on hand, so when it starts to get funky, I'll just change it. Now, when you're putting them in, I usually start right in the middle, and then I do one side, and I start the other side, kind of like this. Peel the backing off, I start, I put it, I line it up in the middle, and I'll do one side, I'll do the other side, okay? If you mess up and you get your angle bad or something, you get a second chance. You can pull it out and start again, okay? But once it's in there for a little while, you know, like if you've got it in there for a whole day, you can't pull it out again. The only thing you could do is remove it and put another one right in its place and freshen them up, which is not a problem. They've been making these things uh, the whole time I've worked at JJ's, you know, at least 25 years, and I don't think they're gonna stop making them. But sometimes it's a good idea to get a few of them because, um, you know, you might want to change it now and then just to freshen things up. The other thing is that it tightens your hat up a little bit. So you have to have, you have to have a little bit of extra room. Um, one thing you can do is you could trim the sides down and that loosens it up. So you only have the part that's making contact with your head. Now, um, if you're bald, you're probably going to be making contact all over it. That's a different story. But, um, they're very good. The cap bandus are good. They will prevent any sweat stains from happening at all. The sweat never even gets to the hat. Not at all. Um, sometimes you'll see it starting right on a stitch, on a cotton stitch. You'll see the stitch that keeps the band on. That will start getting a little puddle around it because um, it's cotton. So what happens is the sweat travels through that cotton stitch and then makes a little circle stain. When you see that, you know Soon you're going to have to either change this band, change the sweat band, or just throw one of these in. I, I always find it easy to stick this in for five bucks, and your hat just lives on and on and on and on. And my hats do. They're old. This, this is a very old hat. This particular one, I left the tag on. You can see how old this tag is. It's super old. We haven't sold this model in like, you know, at least 10 or 15 years or something. 
Um, I have hats that are uh, on my wall back here that are 20 years old, uh, 22 years old, and they all look pretty good. All my hats look really fresh and they look really nice. What's the secret? Okay. The secret is, first of all, be vigilant, watch the sweat thing, okay? Slap a band in if you're starting to see that, okay? The second secret is never get the little holes here. If you're a pincher and you've always gotten holes and it wears out and gets threadbare here, there's only one reason why that happens. That happens because you're either A, storing it on its brim, every day you pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, times a thousand, you're just grabbing, 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 grabbing. It's kind of like taking a paper, a piece of paper and folding it and folding it in the same place over and over and over. Eventually it's going to go threadbare and eventually it's just going to rip and tear. Um, so if you're storing your hat on its brim like this, that's a big no-no. Pretty much what I do, my big secret is I just store them like this. That's it. Most of my hats are upside down. Uh, with the exception of the ones that I keep on the wall here because those are just really They're for show for you guys, you know, but um, That's the other thing if you store your hats on a uh, Like a hat tree or a, a hook or you know a little hat rack coat rack kind of thing We do have the tendency to grab it every morning by that same spot and it takes a little pressure to really grab it well, every time you're doing that, it's just the same thing as leaving it on its brim. It's not really as bad because leaving it on its brim screws the brim up. It makes the brim get extra soft and it loses the flange. The flange starts to go flat and limp. But um, hanging it up will only damage the front because you're grabbing it. So if you're a person that insists on hanging your hats, it can be very safe and it can be very effective. I find my hats on the wall do okay. The only thing is that you have to dust them now and then, um, but that's no big deal. Um, what you have to do is you have to pick up the hat very carefully and be very aware that this is the, the danger zone. That's the area that's a weak point in every hat, right here at the pinch. So when you grab it, try to grab it with two hands by the brim, or grab it like really carefully by the front here. Just let it, let the weight of the hat just kind of fall into your hands. So you're not doing any of this, you know? So let's say you've got a, uh, a two finger pinch there, right? You see how wide that is? You want that to stay even after you grab it. So it's kind of like, you see, I didn't really grab it. I just let the hat just fall into my hands. Be aware of this stuff. These are the things that slowly every day kill your hats. And instead of you getting, you know, 20, 30 years out of your hats plus, you're gonna get, you know, a few seasons out of it. And, you know, after five years, it's shot. Um, I personally try to avoid grabbing it there at all. It's how I naturally pick up my hats. Yeah, I'll pick it up by the brim. So picking it up by the brim is awesome. That's an excellent way to do it. If anybody has, you know, remembers like their grandpa that used to wear hats and stuff, he probably said, don't pick it up by the pinch, pick it up by the brim. So pick it up with two hands by the brim, you'll be okay. Even one hand. Avoid the squeeze, okay? Avoid that. That's going to get you all threadbare here. And, and now it's okay if you like a tight pinch and you like that vintagey look like that, you know? But once it's shaped like that, leave it. Don't keep pinching it, because then you're going to get the holes there. And there's really no way to fix that. There's no going back from that. So, yeah. Keep your hats either upside down, okay? Or in, in the hat box. Upside down, there's a little ring inside that it sits in to elevate the brim. Okay? Um, the other thing is dusting your hats, okay? Packing tape, that's all you need. Get yourself decent packing tape, like scotch or something. Don't get the like 99 cent store stuff. Something that's nice and sticky. Give it a once over. This is how you clean your hats. 
You don't have to go crazy with the pressure. Keep it loose. You can even wipe it nice and lightly. Get every area of the hat. It doesn't matter if it's a wool felt or a fur felt. This is going to be your most effective way to clean it. If you see a little bit of green on there or whatever color your hat is, it's natural. There's always going to be a little felt that comes off. It doesn't mean you're stripping the hat. It probably means that if that's just loose felt that was going to come off anyway. Okay? So you keep it, you know, don't don't give it hard, hard pressure. But just, just sop up all the dust. Anything that's lint on the surface, get it up. Get it off. Okay? If you've got a wool felt hat, the stuff that's made out of uh, wool always gets these deposits of uh, lint on the sides. So if you've got like a crushable wool felt, spend a lot of times on the edge. A lot of times. And you can even give it a good squeeze. Wool felts are really durable. They tend to be okay if you really apply some pressure. If you've got a, a brand new mink and beaver, Valencia, you know, like anything that's really expensive, your $500 hats, be gentle with it. You know, you don't want to take off too much felt. Give it nice, gentle dabs and stuff, okay? You could be a little bit more aggressive with the hat brush. Now the hat brush doesn't really work on wool felt. It only works on fur felt. So if you have a wool felt hat at home, wool crushable light felt, it doesn't matter. Don't get a hat brush, it's just a waste of time. You don't need it. Um, but if you're dealing with fur felts like this, um, you know, we sell hat brushes, uh, we sell these cap banu pads, they're on jjhatcenter.com, you just go to the accessory section, and they're, they're cheap, I think the, the pads are five bucks, the, the brushes maybe 15 or something, but uh, you can even find like cheaper ones on Amazon that are like eight bucks or something, um, they all tend to be very similar, the ones we have at the shop are really good, this, this was actually a uh, donated by a really cool viewer, uh, Roger, who's just super cool. So, what you want to do is you want to brush counterclockwise. I'm holding it here, and I'm rotating. This is good for your fur felt. It basically gets all the fur laying in the same direction. It makes it look kind of like it did when it was new. So there are no fingerprints, there's no scratches, darks and lights. Everything is going smooth. After you do it like this nice and you know, aggressively, then you could turn it this way and just smooth it. Smooth it out. Okay, top two, counterclockwise, only counterclockwise steps. This is basically it. This is all I do to my hats. And believe me, these hats I wear like crazy. Uh, my two green hats, I wear them just 99% of the time. And those are the hats I wear almost always. Um, for like two decades in the shop, I wore these green hats. And they're still super, super fresh. They're just really fresh. Everything about them looks, looks new. Um, there's no secret. The secret is, again, don't squeeze the pinch. Okay, ever. Don't do it. And you could... Just let the weight of the hat just fall into your hand if you have to hold it there, or just hold it by the brim, okay? And store your hats upside down. This is a great way to store them. If you have a shelf on top of your closet, just put them like that. Um, if you've got a hat box, put them in the hat box. They go upside down in the box with a little ring supporting, supporting it like this. So, so in other words, there's not a flat surface flattening out your brim, the ring just goes onto the inside here, so it keeps the brim curvy like that. All right, here's another thing you guys should know about. Um, dust covers. This is called a Western bag. Generally, when you buy a Western hat, it comes with one of these. Now, it's okay to put your hat in plastic. What you do is you wrap it, and you just tuck it like that, okay? You need to make the hat breathe, can't tie the bag. Do not tie the bag. Seal it. Don't you know? Do all this stuff and make it tight. Just take it loosely, tuck it in like that. Okay. Then you can put it inside your uh, your hat box on the ring. 
You could hang it if you want. You could stack them, you know, maybe like two in a stack on top of your closet shelf like this, upside down stack, not like this. Um, but what you don't want to do is tie the bag. That's very bad. It's going to give you things like mildew and bacteria and mold and um, it'll rot your leather band too. So in other words, there's got to be an airflow in there. Um, there are also smaller dust covers like this. This is called a western bag, but generally for western hats. The smaller dust covers just cover the top of the hat. It's kind of like a shower cap shape. It's shaped like a hat. It's got a dome and then a little flat part that covers the brim. So those dust covers are good too. Just keep it on top, okay? And um, take the whole thing, put it inside your hat box. If you're not dealing with hat boxes, something like this will work. It doesn't matter what kind of plastic it is, whether it's saran wrap or, or a uh, supermarket grocery bag or something, just tuck it in like this. Make sure you've got a little bit of airflow that it's not 100% sealed. And that's it. That'll keep the dust off of it. And, um, that's a good thing too. All right. Let's talk about the sweatbands, the leather sweatbands. People uh, always ask me, you know, how do you condition your sweatbands? What do you do to them? Now this band is really soft, nice, new, um, and I've owned it for, you know, I don't know how many years, 15 more. Uh, wearing it every day, sweating in it, rolling the hat up, doing all kinds of stuff to it. The leather band is in great, great shape. Um, what's the secret? Don't put any goop on it. It doesn't need any kind of uh, saddle soap or leather conditioner or leather creams or whatever, Vaseline, none of that stuff. Don't do it. Um, some of these are bonded leathers. Some of them are split grain. Some of them are full grain. Others are even like fake leather. They're sort of like, uh, like either paper or, or plastic with a leathery paint on it. It doesn't matter what you've got there, but um, they all have a finish. They have like a painted sort of a finish on it, and that can react to all sorts of uh, oil-based things like creams, conditioners, and what happens is you start taking that clear coat off of it, and um, the black starts coming off on your skin, and it's just a bad uh, cycle of destruction. It won't help your hat. What you need to do is wear the hat. Wearing it basically will keep it conditioned. Um, just the natural, you know, stuff from your body, the, the oils, you know, and stuff. Uh, that's enough. It kept my hat band really soft and subtle. Supple. Um, they can actually even get nicer in time. They get better in time. Um, that's it, just wear it, okay? And secondly, keep it away from heat. You don't want your hats to be anywhere near radiators. Um, you definitely don't put them on your dashboard on a sunny day and things like that. You're gonna just destroy the band in one day that way. So no heat. Um, when it's uh, February into January and it's really frigid out and you bring it into your house and the heat is just pumping, it doesn't matter if it's near your radiator or far away from your radiator, the whole room is hot. And the whole room is basically like a big radiator chamber. What you need to do is store this hat while it's wet, especially away from hot rooms. So it should be in a, uh, like a room temperature environment. Um, if you're taking a wet hat, it just got rained on or snowed on, bring it into the bathroom crack the window, um, let some breeze go in, and just let everything dry more slowly with some cool air. Uh, cool air is good, it's not going to hurt it, but those uh, the heaters and the radiators, no good. Um, I turn off the heat in my bedroom and I store my guitars and my hats in here. So the walls are still usually hot enough to keep us comfortable in the bedroom, but I just turn off the, the radiator. 
because that will definitely uh, rot your leather, dry it out, and just uh, it'll die prematurely. And uh, changing the leather band on a hat is expensive. Um, it's, it's expensive. You gotta pay for the leather, you gotta pay for the shipping back and forth and stuff, and um, it's something you don't really need to do often. Um, it, it should happen, you know, in a matter of decades, you know. You have your hat 20, 30 years, and then you change it and say, okay, you know, I understand that. Um, but, you know, my hats are really old, and the leather seem to be doing okay. And I don't really do anything special to these hats. All I do is I tend to just uh, store most of them upside down. I keep them away from heat. And I put these uh, sweat pads in there when it's time to prevent any sweat stains. That's really it. Um, recently, the last few months, I've been hanging some hats up there. But again, there's no heat in this room. Not at all. And when I grab the hat, I'm generally grabbing it by the brim with two hands or I just let it just kind of fall into my hand like that. I don't squeeze the pinch, all right? Be aware that that's your weak point, especially on Panama hats. That's where they're gonna always, always, always die, is right here from squeezing it. Basically from stirring your Panama hat like this, picking it up, you know, you, you go and you have some coffee at a diner or something, you put your hat down and then you pick it up and you leave. That little squeeze is, uh, it's a repetitive motion that you're going to do every single day. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Thousands and thousands of times. And then you make a hole here. And the rest of your hat might look great, but you've got holes. You know, what are you going to do? I mean, there are some things you could do if you've got a hole right there. There's a way of just lowering the crown. You just kind of lower it. Okay. And you hide the, the hole inside here in the shadows. So in other words, it used to be up there. You can take that, tuck it down, and hide the, the hole back there. But generally, you know, you don't want any of that. You don't want holes in your hat, so don't store it on its brim, ever. And if you're hanging your hat, remember, don't grab it there. Just let it fall into your hand, or just grab it by the brim, both hands. That's it. Um, I think we covered everything. And um, what else can we talk about? There's not much more to talk about in terms of hat care. Um, the band you could usually clean like this going upwards with the grain. There's going to be dust in those little slots of the grow grain. So just go upwards gently, very gently. Dust up and out of the grow grain. When you're done, pat it down lightly, especially if you're dealing with expensive pads. You don't want to take, you know, press it and take tons of felt off. You just want to get anything that's loose. Any lint or loose felt that's already off, you just get it off. Okay, after you dust the hat, you go back and you get everything going in the counterclockwise direction like this with your hat brush. First I go like this kind of more aggressively. Generally this doesn't hurt your hat at all. It's okay. Brushing is good. It's like brushing your shoes or something. The more you do it the better it is. Then I take it sideways and I give it a good smoothing out. The brushing also works good with just a little steam. Um, I've got a jiffy steamer here, but remember when you're when you're brushing and steaming, you want it to be far away. It's just a very light mist, like you know maybe 18 inches away or something. When you want to change the shape of the hat, you know like you want to do something with the brim or the crown, um, that's when you get close, and that's for changing shape. But far away when you're just you're basically just brushing and steaming a hat. What that does is just makes the, the felt look like when it was new. It just gets that evenness to it. All the scratches, fingerprints from touching it, they all go away and everything just looks smooth and even, new again. Now you
you can find all these things on uh, jjhatcenter.com and you just go to the accessories section. They've got a, a brush very similar to this. It's horse hair. This is boar's hair. Um, I don't really see too much difference. They're kind of exactly the same. Some people like to do a, a light brush and a dark brush. They take the horse hair brushes, the dark ones for uh, for their dark hats, and then if they have silver belly hats, like really light silver belly and stuff, then uh, they get a light colored brush like this, so you have two brushes for your darks and your lights. Because so you don't want to get like that white silver belly powder on your black hats, and you don't want to get your black hat dust, your, you know, black felt on your white hats. So hat shops always have two sets of brushes, a light one and a dark one. So if you want to color code it like that, a light and a dark, you can do that. But uh, I think the horsehair brushes are fine. They tend to be slightly cheaper, cheaper than these. Uh, I was very lucky that uh, a really nice viewer picked out uh, you know, one of the most expensive brushes for me, this Valentino Garemi. Valentino Garemi. Um, I like it, it's nice. Um, but I don't think there's too much difference between this and just a straight black uh, horse hair brim brush. They're pretty much going to behave the same. And um, I've used horse hair brushes at JJ's for 25 years, uh, and they have not broken down. You'll lose a few bristles, it'll get a little bit thinner, but they last forever. You'll pretty much have one, one horse hair or boar's hair brush forever. It'll never die on you. So, um, that's it guys, probably going to play a little guitar, I can use a little, uh, guitar therapy myself, uh, sorry if I'm mumbling, it's, uh, it's early in the morning, I'm making this video early today, just kind of woke up, and, uh, I stopped drinking coffee, which is a great thing too, coffee was, uh, definitely giving me the jitters, so, I'm, I'm more mellow now, so it's maybe a good thing, I think. But, uh, we'll see. I, I tend to mumble, so hopefully uh, this isn't too low. You guys can hear what I'm saying. All right, that's it. As far as this uh, ventilation, uh, we have a machine at JJ Hat Centers that does that. It's a crown venting machine. It's super, super old. It looks like it's from the 20s or 30s, something like that. It's, you know, like this big steel press thing. It almost looks like a, it, anybody who's a, a plumber, it looks like a pipe threader, something like that. It's got like a big arm that's, you know, as long as a human arm and you have to, it's like, a, I think it's iron or steel or something. And you have to, and there's big nails that kind of perforate the, uh, the felt. And uh, I believe we can do that for you for free uh, as a walk-in. If you ever come into JJ's, we can ventilate your crowns. Nobody has ever asked for it. It's kind of like a, an odd thing. But uh, generally, if you want to ventilate your hat and make it cooler, the first thing you do is just get the lining out. That's going to make a, a huge difference when these little holes are not going to make too much of a difference. I just decided I was going to have one green hat perforated and one not, so I thought it was kind of a cool thing. Alright, let's put it back and play a little guitar, okay?
Thank you.